It is finally that time of the year again where I talk trash about your favorite books and you resent me for it. If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about the worst books that I've read in 2023. I wait all year to say those words in the intro. Looking forward to it. I will link in the description box the best books that I've read this year, also the most surprising and most disappointing. But today, it's all about the ones that I absolutely hated. I'm going to be honest, this year was not that bad because I have been learning to put down books when I'm not enjoying them, which makes for a much better <laughs> reading experience for me. But these videos might be a little bit less intense and dramatic. It's okay, though. I still found enough to complain about. Speaking of which, let's start by complaining about The Maid. Why and how did this book win the Goodreads Choice Award of 2022 in the mystery thriller category? Who was paid? Because this was so bad. I don't understand. I feel like in general, I don't really agree with that category, so whatever. But I found that the main character, she is a maid, as the title mentions, and she discovers this body, there's this whole thing, is she the one that's going to be accused or she is the one that's being accused and is she responsible or not? Will she be able to um, prove that she didn't do it? But the main character is written like she's on the spectrum. The author doesn't label her, but it's kind of, you know, implied. But it's written in a way that is, one, super condescending, and two, I feel like when convenient, she is actually really good at noticing things, but then when she isn't, then, oh, she, she's possibly on a spectrum. It was really annoying to follow it. Uh, the ending was just so mediocre, and then I realized that this is going to be a series. <laughs> Why? I believe book two is already out. Frankly, I 100% believe that this one, because it probably was part of, like, big book club, so more people read it and then they voted for the only book that they read, because this was incredibly mediocre. I don't get it. I, I really don't. Obviously, we all have different tastes, but some of you have bad taste. <laughs> I love doing this video just because I can say stuff like that. So, the second book. I really hesitated about including this one in my most disappointing books of 2023 because, frankly, it is probably my biggest disappointment, but it's so much so that I hated it. Um, Cytonic by Brendan Sanderson. I never thought I would include one of his books in any of my worst or most disappointing books of the year because, frankly, I do think that he's a good author, but the older I get or the more I read, I feel like his Y stuff not good. And this is the third book in the Skyward series. The first two books in this series were good. It is a YA sci-fi series. You're following the remnant of humanity on this planet, and you're following this young woman who's trying to make it as a pilot to um, fighting against aliens, blah blah blah. The humor is definitely very juvenile, but I feel like it suits the character and it works in book one, and book two becomes a lot bigger. Uh, the world is expanded, you have a lot of political intrigue, so I was still very much into it, and both of them had like great endings. Brandy Sandy always has really big dramatic endings, and it works, but this one felt like a huge tangent to the series, and I was already not sure I was going to read it because there were two novellas between a book two and three. They were both like 200 pages, and they were incredibly awful. They were co-written with someone else, and I feel like it showed, but they just sucked. But then this, again, huge tangent to the series. It's barely linked to it. It's like a pause to the series, and I was bored the whole time. Like, really, really, really bored. And I don't even know if I'm gonna read. There's another novella between book three and four, and I believe book four is already out. I haven't checked the review. Like, I haven't even looked because I was so bored throughout this whole book that I don't know if I'm gonna continue. I will probably eventually look because I'm curious, but incredibly disappointed because book one and two were favorites of mine and they were changing my mind because, again, I don't think I like his young adult stuff. I seem to mostly enjoy his adult fantasy series, but yes, this was awful, frankly. I haven't seen anyone rave about it. If you did, let me know, but I... I no. I don't think I'm gonna even finish the series now because... I finally read this book because I picked it up from this giant jar. If you haven't seen it, I've been doing a Read It or Unhaul It series where I pick books that I haven't read from my shelf and finally have to decide if I'm going to read them or get rid of them. And it made me pick up books that have been on there for way too long, including Hyperion. There's so much hype. I'm a big sci-fi fan and I've been reading less and less, but I've been reading a lot of classic sci-fi because I personally enjoy seeing, you know, where it started and compare it to newer stuff. And I'm always prepared to what I've been calling a little bit of spice, not the spicy fun stuff like romance book, but the kind where it's a little bit of racism, sexism, or homophobia. And a lot of people use the excuse, oh, they were written a while ago. It doesn't really work, but whatever. But this one was actually not that old. That's what I realized midway through. This was published in the 90s, I think, which is like, 
why is it the way it is then? There are multiple stories in this book. You're following this group of people that are essentially forced to travel together to a certain point in the planet, and they share the stories one by one. And out of all of them, the first one was good, the third one was also good, but everything else was not, like really not. And a huge pet peeve of mine, which, mild spoiler, it's the first book in the series though, so it's not that big of a spoiler, but the one female character, the one and only female character is there to be pregnant. <laughs> which obviously pisses me off. Why is she there just to carry this precious, precious seed? Like, again, 90s, not, you know, in the 1800. No. So, yeah, I don't think this was worth the hype. I have seen this on so many lists of, like, must-read sci-fi classics. Don't do it. There are so many more interesting sci-fi books out there, and this is just not one of them. I don't remember half the stories. I have to actually force myself. It was not memorable, kind of mediocre, and I really genuinely thought when I bought this book that I was going to give it a five star, and I, I really didn't. I also will not be supporting the author anymore in general, so I just wanted to see because I already own the book, but this was actually already on my unhaul bookshelf, so it's going back there. The next book I'm pretty sure is the official worst book that I've read in 2023. It is in French, there's an English version. Uh, it is Les Fourmis, which who published that? Growing up, I saw people read this. There was a little bit of hype at the time, and I was looking forward to reading it because the premise sounded interesting. It wasn't, but you have this family. They inherited this house, and they are told to not go in the basement, and you're following part of the story through the eyes of Ents, which, okay, I'm intrigued. Don't do it. <laughs> this was genuinely so awful. It felt like a children's book, and then you would get huge section through the eyes of the ants. And at first it was interesting. I was trying to get into it. I thought maybe we would get similar vibes to Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. No, no, it was literally the worst book that I've read this year. I didn't think you could make this concept really boring. You have sections that are just like, frankly, awfully written. My favorite, let me find it. Okay, I, I can't find it, but I can't, I have to translate it anyway. So long story short, you have this man that shows up uh, to have access to the basement. The grandma is there, opens the door, and she decides to trust him because his ears look like they haven't, like they look like fetuses ears, and she decides that that makes him trustworthy. Like that's, that's the level of what the heck am I reading level? Like, no, I do, I, really? I, <laughs> oh, oh. I f okay, I found it. I actually found it. And it's even worse than that because she's thinking that he looks like he must have been like a, a skinny fetus and she moderately appreciated skinny fetuses. This is actually worse than I remember. <laughs> this is just so fucking... <laughs> like, don't tell me that this is one of the worst things you've ever heard. Like, what is this? What I... No, um, it is the first book in a series. And again, if you really like the idea of like intelligent ants, maybe, but no, it, I, I was so bored, so, so bored, so don't do it. I mean, you can, but don't. Another short book that ended up feeling incredibly long, uh, The Old Woman with the Knife. This is a Korean translation, I believe. I have been trying to read more translated work, and this was one of the worst. There are two, actually, in this video. Um, this was one of the worst one that I've read. This was short, yet I could hardly finish it. The audiobook, I think, was like six hours, and I <laughs> barely put it down. And I almost didn't finish it. Uh, the concept's super intriguing. I've read a couple books with that topic, because I think it's a good idea, but it never works for me. You have this old woman who spent like 40 years being an assassin, and, you know, things come back to haunt her. And yeah, don't do it. It's just so boring. So, so boring. I don't understand the hype there. Let's go with the other translated work. You have Days at the Morosaki Bookshop. The concept, again, sounded interesting. You have this woman, she goes through a heartbreak, a breakup, and she goes to work in this small town, this used bookstore from her uncle, and, you know, trying to build back her life. And this woman annoyed me. Like, you know, when you read a book and you realize, oh, this was written by a man, because she makes one bad decision after the other, and then there's another scene that just annoyed me. One intimate, physically intimate moment with her aunt, when they are bathing naked, like, I know that, like, it's not a problem in different culture, but, like, why is it the one moment you decide to make them 
hug. Like, it, it was just so awkward. She was written really badly, and the ending was not satisfying. Once again, incredibly short audiobook, but just, I feel like it could have been something good. Used bookstore, small section of town, like, you could have had good vibes, and yeah, she just makes worse decisions with romance. She keeps going, and I just couldn't do it. So, don't do it. Skip that one for sure. The next book, frankly, I did it to myself, or you did it to me, quite frankly. Um, 1Q84 by Murakami. Okay, if you've seen my worst books of last year, you know that I read and finished Norwegian Wood, and I said that, first off, that was the worst book I had read, and second of all, I wasn't going to read anything else by him. And here we are. In my defense, this was part of a video where I was reading books that you thought I was going to hate that I already owned. I didn't purposely buy these books hoping to hate them, it just so happened that they had been on my shelf for years, and this was on there, and I don't like to get rid of books without giving them a shot, so I did. And I read a bit more after the video just to, I don't know, I kept trying to hope that it was going to get better. It never does. And I just don't understand. I feel like sometimes you're like, okay, this book wasn't for me, but you know, it's popular, whatever, some people, I kind of get it. I don't get the hype behind Murakami. I question my sanity every time I hear someone rave about him because what do you see in him? What do you see? This, again, the main female character was just straight up offensive. The first chapter you introduced to her, she is stuck in traffic on a highway and then she decides to get out and go up a ladder and then go down the other side. And when she's going up, she is thinking about how, oh, like my, my skirt is going up, they're gonna see everything, and then she's like, well, you know, too bad, uh, at least my legs are my best feature that I'm proud of. <laughs> and she describes herself and had a narration about how, like, oh, she's so skinny, and blah, like, it's just so weird. And then when she's going down, which I think it's chapter three, so it's still, you know, within the first 30 pages, she's thinking to herself, like, reminiscing about the only one lesbian encounter she had, which, like, things like why why that moment why and it's like the second time that i read a book by him that has one of those scenes but she reassures us that you know it was when she was 18 she's not actually a lesbian like it's just so freaking weird like who writes like that and again so early in the book like he just wants to make clear that he's weird straight away and then, mild spoiler, but like, is it really, frankly? It has very little to do with the story, but in both books, again, in both books, you have him describing an essay encounter, and the essay is like the purple, 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 <laughs> I hate English. The person doing it is a 13-year-old girl doing it to an adult. In both freaking books, who's the weirdo that is publishing his work and being like, mm, yeah, we don't need to edit any of these choices. Actually, I'm left wondering what else was in there that they ended up managing to cut off because what the f do you guys see in this? Like, I don't understand. Like, do you just not notice it? Because I've had that conversation about Norwegian Wood. Like, I would say the specific scene with Midori, and people are like, oh, I didn't notice. How did you miss that? How do you not find it disturbing? And there's a difference between including a topic to discuss it, social commentary. There's no social commentary in his work. Like, it is 100% just him being a weirdo. Like, you cannot convince me. Otherwise, if you listen to him at any kind of an interview, he's like, women are so mysterious. No, they're not. You're just a weirdo. So I am <laughs> so done. See, I needed to include his work because that's the only way I was going to get actually annoyed in this video. Um, but never again. I don't understand what people see in him that I don't. And I am utterly interested in finding out. I, I just will continue to just not want his work on my shelf, like, ever. This is, again, already on the unhaul shelf. This is getting out of my house as soon as I can, because what the actual... No. Just, no. No. This felt good. It needed to happen. Um, next. Okay. We have two special mentions, because if I don't include these books, you're gonna ask me. So, first off, we have Fourth Wing, easily the worst written book that I've read this year. Yes, you wonder... Did anyone actually edit this? Because it doesn't look like it. It had so many convenient moments. I'm trying to be, like, vague-ish. Convenient moments. Uh, for example, there are two moments where she magically overhears when she's, like, up a tree. <laughs> Conversation. One of them is, like, especially not believable. There's also the whole, like, orange section that was, okay, questionable. And this whole stupid little 
dragon. That's all I'm going to say. I did film myself read this book if you want to see the dramatic quotes. Um, we'll link that if you want to see this. It was at least entertaining. This is readable, but just so awfully I don't understand. Like, I understand that, like, I would have probably enjoyed this a lot more if I read this, like, 10 years ago or something. I get it. And frankly, I do think a lot of people ended up bashing this book, and I'm like, you love Sarah J. Maas, so, like, maybe don't do so much. But I do agree that the romance was straight offensive. The horny dragon section? What the heck? And, yeah, I'm happy to move on and not continue this series. That, <laughs> no. <laughs> the next book, though, um, yes, it was awful. I'm a little traumatized. I read Ice Planet Barbarians. I read it because you wanted me to read this. This is the first spicy book I have read. And it, it was, it, it was something. It was something. I will, uh, memorable, yes. Questionable content, questionable content. And I don't understand what's the hype about wanting to get pregnant from aliens. That's all I'm gonna say. Maybe it's because I'm child-free, who knows, but what did I read? With that said, I want to mention that this is a special mention because I don't even really consider it part of the worst book section because it is self-aware, which I think makes the biggest difference. Is it awful? Yes. Yes, it is. But the author knows that. So it makes it super entertaining. Don't get me wrong. It took the first half before I was on board because I actually also recorded myself reading this. And the first half, I was like, what is wrong with everyone? Why do you guys read this and like this? And then the second half, I'm like, okay, you know what? I get it. It is ridiculous, but like it knows it's ridiculous. So will I read the whole, I don't know, 20 book series or something? Probably not, but I am fully open to reading book two whenever I get in a reading slump, which will eventually happen, and I'll record myself and we'll laugh all over again. So if you want to see me going through it, <laughs> I will also link that in the description box. It was worth it, but this isn't going to ever make it to my best books of the year. No, but it's not the worst book I've read. So there, I said it. So these are officially the worst books that I've read this year. Uh, there are a few that I didn't finish that were quite awful, like special mention to Stormfront, for example. This was also part of the video, the vlog, where I was reading the books that you thought I was going to hate. So if you want to see more about it, but it's just like straight up just sexism. Quite frankly, I'm so over it at this point that I'm learning to put down books when I'm not enjoying them. Like every female character, I think there were four at the point I put it down at page like 100. Uh, they were basically sexy limbs, like even the dead body, which like... <laughs> Even in death, we're not safe. So if you want to see that, again, that will be linked. And I'm just really over it. So at this point, I'm happy with the fact that not many of those books made it to this video because I didn't torture myself with them. So this is it. I think it wasn't that bad. It wasn't as dramatic as past years, but that made my year better in general. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Let me in the comment section if you have read any of these. Do you feel the same? Do you feel differently? And I want to know the worst books you have read in 2023 because we want to know which books we should avoid. I also put on the screen more videos from this series. Definitely check those out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.